In this video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the target joint 2D. So I have my blue platform selected. I'm just going to go ahead and add that target joint 2D. And let's take a look at its default settings. So I'll go ahead, hit play. It just sits there. And if I try to jump on it, well, first off, it's really tippy. Uh, let's see if I can get it in the center. Uh, notice it, it moves a bit. It's a spring. If it moves a bit in one direction, it's always going to try to line back up. So if I can get a bit more force on it. Uh, uh, it's a little tippy. Uh, let's go ahead and take care of that tippiness. I'm going to come up to the rigid body and let's go ahead and just increase this. So it's a linear drag that makes it spin. Let's try a value of, let's say 10. It's probably not quite enough. Let's go ahead and we'll try it at 10. Uh, it's better, but it's still pretty tippy. Uh, we're going to need a lot more. Let's try a thousand. We'll go ahead. We'll jump on this, see what it's like. That's better. So now when I jump up and down, we notice that it moves and it just comes back to the spot that it started at. And of course you can move this in any direction you want. And it's always gonna to try to recenter it for you. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at its properties. So if we zoom in, we've got that little plus sign, which is always on the center, the actual target. So if we went ahead and move this, we'll zoom out a bit. Well, before we do that, we have to untick the auto configure target joint. I'm so used to the other joints having it above it, but this one's below. So we can go ahead and we can move it and we can say, you know, this is the spot we want it to constantly try to get to. And of course the other one is the anchor, which is where this game object is going to try to align there. So by default, it's always at wherever the pivot point is. So if I had the pivot point down here in the center, that's where it's going to be. Of course you can move it if you want. You can also grab it and drag it. I find sometimes it's harder to grab and drag, but I do find it easier to position. So when I start this up, it's just going to snap down here. And again, trying to get this, think of it as this big hoop, trying to go around that little dot. So we'll go ahead, we'll start it up and there we go. So go ahead and position it where you want. I'm going to go ahead and just freeze the rotation just for demonstration for this here video, just so it doesn't tip. All right, so we've looked at the auto configure. We can go ahead, click it, and that just goes and moves the, the actual connected or the target to wherever the pivot point is. I'm actually going to go ahead and set the anchor there as well. And let's start looking at some of these other values. So the max force, this is how much force is going to be used to try to snap it back. And you have to overcome this force to get it to move. So if we really lower this, let's do a 30. And we jump on it. There we go. Now I, th I think I'm at about a 60 for this character if I want it to be even. Usually I do something about an 80. So let's go in between, let's do a 70. We'll get lots of play off of this one. And again, these values are going to change according to your, the game, the way you have it set up. So I get lots of movement off of that. Let's keep going. I want to look at the frequency next. And that's basically how springy this joint is going to be. The higher the number, the stiffer this joint is going to be. So at a really low number, we're at five. Let's go down to like a one. It's going to be a very loose spring. We can already see it really just stretches down automatically. And if I were to go and jump on that, not a very tight spring. Let's increase, let's increase it just a bit. Let's bring it up to a three. Now we'll try it out. And it fits a lot better. And we can see how much stronger that spring is. <laughs> All right, let's come down. We'll look at the next one, the dampening ratio. This is a float. It goes between zero and one. The higher the number, the less movement you're going to get or the, the, the tighter it's going to be. So by default, it's at one. Let's go ahead and we'll put it to a point one. And we'll try it out. And we see how much bouncer it is. So think of it as, as sort of an offset. If you have it at one, it snaps pretty close to the actual point it's supposed to be. 
where the lower you have it, it's going to overshoot and come back. So you get kind of like that rubber banding effect. I'm sure there's probably an actual real, just one word description for that, but anyway, that's how it works. Then of course, brake force we've looked at before with every other joint. I don't think there's one joint that doesn't have this, but basically if enough force is applied to this, it will break. This component is destroyed and the object is just going to be subject to regular physics and fall around. So we'll go ahead. I've got it set to 50. This should break it as soon as I jump on it. And away we go. So there we go. The target joint 2D. What would you think of it? What are you going to use it for in your game? Go ahead and let us know down below in the comments. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you liked the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>